Welcome to the Automators Podcast with your host, Jackie Stook and Joe Glines. Hey, everybody. So today we're going to discuss the pros and cons of Windows 365, you know, Windows in the cloud. They're all cons. No, I'm So, hey, it's Jackie from Copenhagen, Denmark. And Joe from Dallas, Texas. And so today we were going to discuss, you know, Windows in the cloud, Windows 365, the pros and cons of that. And to to kind of get started, we'd like to start with the pros of that. And I'd say with cloud-based stuff, Windows and other of their software will be more reliable. That That's one way of putting it, at least, because... I've seen times and time again people using unupdated versions of Office or an older version of Windows, whatever, and that will give them issues just because, yeah, they never got to do the update or whatever. And if it's in the cloud, you can very easily at least tell people they're not using uh a version that's compatible with whatever is in the cloud. Well, and for me on that one, I would say it's it's equally important the fact that the hardware it's going to be running on is very standardized and Windows is going to be sure, you know, that they have a certain type of server that, you know, is going to be able to run it or Windows environment, whatever you want to call it, compared to, I mean, Windows could speed up a lot for, you know, not being the best tool in the world and getting hacked and having to reboot. But think about all the technology it has to build around and to work with, right? And if they can start streamlining that and reduce that and, you know, focus on, well, here are the 15 servers that we're going to certify that make sure, I mean, it, it's going to have, I think, a, a big effect on the reliability of the things running properly and, and not having driver issues or whatnot like that. I'd say because they can keep it business to business without people being in whatever uh, weird places without them having any kind of control on the hardware the Windows is running on, sure, that, that'll that keep it uh, really, really uh, tight. Yeah, which which feeds right into the next one, which I, I absolutely love this point of I don't have to keep updating my computer. You know, um, the, it'll be updated automatically on the servers and probably – at some point, I don't think right away, but I'll be able to say on a given day, oh, I'm just doing word processing today or this that. I, give me a, a, a you know a slower version. But on days where I'm doing some computer science stuff, um, maybe I spend a little more money and get some more RAM or get a faster CPU or whatever, right? And that's amazing to be able to do that. Yeah, where, where you can end up having, let's say, a, a a tad one down, run down hardware on your end because all of the actual computing power and all of the lifting is done in the cloud and all of what you're actually doing is viewing it. Uh, to, to us that have done quite a few things in different types of programs, in, in games and emulators and all kinds of stuff, we know the effects of doing it one way or the other. And to the end user, they don't really care if it runs smoothly. It, it's fine. Right. You want to handle the next one? No, I can take that one. Um, can office out of any computer, just as I, I kind of pointed at, um, as long as it has internet connection, you know, the settings, the files, whatever might be needed to actually access. But as long as you have that in place, um, you could be anywhere. You you don't need to be at the office or uh, at home or whatever because you have the full power of whatever programs you use with your own company, the company you work at, or whatever project you're working on, just because it's available using the internet. Yeah, you basically not log in and have access to everything you're doing, right? I mean, that's... That's spot on. It reminds me of TI when I, I switched to using Dropbox and I made my desktop the same on every computer. And then they are all they were all under Dropbox. So every computer I went to, it was all the same. Everywhere I went, everything, all my files, because everything was under Dropbox, it was great. Uh, which leads into our next point too as well, is all your files are backed up, which is really, you know, awesome. Another amazing point. 
Yeah, exactly. And I, I love that currently we're using 365 uh, at work with SharePoint. And I have a lot of colleagues that are still stuck in um, one of the Citrix portals that we had before, okay. where you had your home computer, you had that cloud computer that people didn't really understand. That was the Citrix gateway. And then you had your physical work computer which were three different computers all together. And people really couldn't grasp it because Citrix looked as if it was running and had opened Word or whatever locally on your machine, but it hadn't. It was just a viewing experience. So when people actually went and stored whatever they had worked on, they were storing it on the Citrix server. And then they actually believed they could go and find it on, in my documents folder or whatever when they got back to work. And of course they couldn't. So yeah, stuff like that, that will be negated completely. And I said, you, you might also have other uh, things or smaller things, bigger things. But one of the big things is you'll probably have fewer stuff like viruses. If you are not carrying physical storage devices from one place to the other. If, if I'm not bringing my work computer home, plugging in with whatever Chinese devices or whatever I, I have at home into it, it's probably gonna be safer if I just use my actual home computer, logging into whatever cloud account that has all of the needed barriers and the newest updated antivirus systems and stuff like that, and instead of actually carrying that physical device back and forth. Yeah, and and besides, which Jack, you and I both have you know done this for for years before of having to lug around a big laptop just sucks, right? So having it where you don't even have to do that anymore, I think it's pretty awesome. Um, the last big one I'd say is. Uh, possibly running things in the cloud. You don't have to worry if your computer's on, which for auto hotkey, right, is one of the big things that I always have a difficulty explaining to people with auto hotkey of, no, I don't do server side automation. You know, I do stuff that's really on your computer. And why, oh, well, why can't I just have this thing run at any time? Well, you have to make sure your computer's on and connect to the internet. Well, this theoretically should negate that as long as we can install auto hotkey in that computer. Um, it can be running all the time. Yeah, and I've I've done it myself, and I've seen other company type setups where what they actually give you is just a remote desktop running somewhere, running an auto hotkey file, running whatever type of program it can be Python, it can be C plus plus, it can be anything. As usually, it's just meant to work as a user um, at their level. So to give people that cloud feeling, that ability to run uh, at all times, anywhere, everywhere, and people are not hearing the hum of a computer, give them the remote desktop, put it there. It's actually running at the cloud, uh, the server farm next door, uh, but you're not hearing it. Well, so. and Jack, to that point, sorry, I'm going to throw one on here, which is very similar to that, but I didn't realize it until you said it. Here, I often have like a laptop sitting next to me and I'm using multiple computers, right? But that's physically, I have multiple computers, but there's no reason why we couldn't have multiple different accounts that we can log into and task them with different things. Um, you know, yeah. that's, that's awesome. All right. So let's, uh, where are we jumping into the cons here? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Why don't you go so, ahead? And it? Yeah, I'd say, um, one of the cons that we're seeing, at least, is um, the connection to programs programmatically, like without a hotkey, would or may become unendingly more difficult. Because if it just works in the cloud, it might be inside the Microsoft suit or inside whichever uh, type of environment you have in your uh, company. Connecting to that might not be something that's even built in in the end. It, there might not be any API, someone like us, uh, external uh, programmers can actually tap into uh, and thereby 
making a lot of the automation the way we are currently doing it with RPA type uh, methods less and less um, viable. Yeah, yeah, true. But we don't know for sure if we'll have like an API type access to the things versus having to resort to using images and moving things around, right? But theoretically, if we can get AutoHotKey running in that cloud version, then we probably would be okay. But we still, even with that, they might change the programs and not have as good APIs for us, but, but we don't know. Um, now, the next one, Jackie, you got to be looking at me for this one, okay? Are, are you ready for it? I've been, I was practicing this. Okay, here we go. Latency. So latency, right? Where you you try, you know, things just don't move at the same speed when you're going through the internet, especially for me because I'm out here in bumpkins. I don't know my internet is slow, and working from stuff in the cloud can be very painful depending on how it's built and how things are are happening. I'd say I recently we had we have had an amazing year with online meetings and and whatever uh, over the corona corona year here, but almost to the end of it, one of the last uh, educational speaker meetings we had, uh, someone uh, not in our immediate um, what would you call that? Immediate parts of the, the company uh, had to teach us about something. And the latency on that meeting was just abysmal, right? It was yeah. really, really bad. It was so bad so that when we tried to tell the person presenting that we couldn't hear them anymore or their, their image wasn't moving or whatever it was, they didn't even receive it. They 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 ended up getting the information so late that it almost didn't make sense anymore sure. because they had started being totally um, synced up when they actually got the information, which made it like like so we. Oh, we can't hear you. Oh, oh, we can't. What, what did you click? Your screen isn't, uh, your, your image isn't updating. And yeah. then when they hear it, their, their, their latency is perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> it's like, so they stop presenting when everybody is able to follow along because we've just told them that we couldn't, but that was 30 seconds ago. It was like, so yeah, it, it ended up being one of the worst meeting <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. online things I've ever been to because just kept going like that. And we ended up uh, run it, ending it sooner than it was meant to. And stuff yeah, there's like something yeah. you said about recording a video and then just giving in the video file to play, right? Um, and then, you know, dealing with it after, uh, just in case. Uh, I saw, and like I said, this is one, you know, I'm no Biden fan, but it doesn't matter. But there's this call, a Zoom call, where he's trying to do, like you're saying, and I, I, I felt bad for the guy because it, it's not out of his control, right? But the person, you know, right when he would say, is like, well, can't you hear me? And then the person's like trying to react. And it was just, it was so awkward because they were at least like 20 seconds in between like the responses. And it's not his fault, like, you know, but yeah, it's, it's a terrible experience. Um, obviously, yeah. the requiring of the internet alone, which, which you know, it nowadays it's gotten better and better, but boy, it it's still when it's down, it sucks. What do you do, right? You're you're in trouble. Yeah, I'd I'd say that's that's one of the big ones here. We've had it a few times. We didn't have it much in the apartment, but here in the house, we have we had two within the first month. I hadn't had any since, but we had two there. And because it was such a long time ago that we last had internet outages, it actually really popped how much that meant. Mm. Right? It, it's, oh, right. It, it's just like, yeah, okay, now we don't have access to the internet. You know what? Let's make dinner. Now the potatoes are cooking and the, the meat needs to go on in a few minutes. Let me just check. If, oh, I don't have internet. Yeah. Let me get the recipe for the. Yeah, okay. yeah, I can't do that. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's, it's just it's those small, small things, right? It was every time you had that few uh, moments or whatever where you would normally just turn to your phone and be entertained by the internet in some way um, that wasn't possible. And I must say that's 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 a thing in every type of thing. So if your entire company is now reliant on internet access, doesn't really make much sense if you are in a place where internet isn't so that stable, right? It needs to really. I don't remember if you and I talked about this, but I know Isaiah's you know, Rapper X was doing some work with you. And uh, it took us quite a while. All of a sudden, it, he, I, he, he has regular power outages, right? He's in the Dominican Republic. And so power goes down sometimes for three or four hours, right? Easily, very frequently. And it wasn't until a couple months ago that we realized, because I sent him this old laptop I had just as a backup, and I, I bought a couple extra batteries. And then both of us, he's like, yeah, why do I have a desktop computer? I'm in this country where power is always going out. It's stupid for me to be having a desktop computer, right? Like we both agreed, like, you're right. You know what? Yeah, you need to sell that and buy a, a good laptop because it's, it goes out so often, you know, then he's stuck. He's like, great. You know, I got seven hours of sitting around. Um, so anyway, yeah, it's, it's, that's a good point, Jackie. If don't, don't yeah. plan it when you're in, Kilimanjaro or, or wherever, you know, with that there's the internet's bad. Yeah. Stick to the strong spots. Yeah. And, and again, it also kind of points into who then owns your data, right? It is if everything is in the cloud and, and you can do a lot of written agreements and, and whatever, but, but still who is actually the owners. And I know a lot of people actually don't know that. Um, yeah, you have an agreement with Microsoft, but Microsoft servers are then run by who knows, uh, uh, Foxy uh, Server Alliance uh, that are then owned by um, crystal clear internet cables that are then a subsidiary of uh, Amazon or whatever, right? It, it's It's all interconnected like that and Whoever actually owns your data can, <laughs> if they wanted to, just disconnect the server that your stuff was on and take it. Yeah. It's like, well, it, it's gone. Right? Either disaster or they want to steal well, whatever. Right. So, which brings up two more points. And so there's the whole parlor, like if you're familiar with parlor, that it was the social site that iPhone and Android and Amazon all took, you know, they took them out of the stores and got rid of their website and just killed them. Um, it, it, I don't want to get into the whole why this and that, but it, it's a really good point of like, you know, you are, before we owned our own stuff and now suddenly you're, you're letting someone else own it and, they can really screw you. Is basically what boils up to. The second one yeah. that I think fits in this really well is the vulnerability of every every week. You know, we'll see some major hacks where you know millions of people's data was stolen. You know, hacked into because it's in the cloud, right? And or at least not maybe it's not because of the cloud, but more often than not, it's from the cloud in some way. So it definitely has some issues there. Absolutely. Uh, do you have the last one, Joe? Sure, yeah, I'll grab, and just, the, you know, at least right now, the pricing around the Windows 365, it was, I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was steep. I remember that. I think it was a couple hundred a month, if I remember something like that. It was, it was pretty steep. I, I still think I wouldn't worry at all about that because in the long run, Microsoft wants something like this to go to, to everybody, right? I, I could see them totally loving this. So they'll drop the price for, for consumers. Uh, but yeah, it is. It, it, it is one of those really, really good back and forth ones, right? It's like they need to find that sweet spot on the pricing, right? like everybody else. If they want to keep their position in the market, they can't rely on one horse alone. They they need to find a place and a price where as many as possible will choose them. Well, hey, Jackie, I. I hadn't thought about this until now, but um, I just thought of a, a pro, not necessarily for the Windows 365 itself, but for the general concept, 
right, of having an OS in your computer in the cloud, suddenly to me, like people, if, you know, I can, I can have a, a geeky person like you, right, set up my system for me, and it could be Linux or it could be some other system, and I don't really care, right? I have access to programs. They all work. I have access to all my stuff. I don't care if it's Windows or something else, right? So I could see how um, the problem is if we didn't have that, everyone has to build their own systems and do all the stuff, and it's it's much harder, right? But with the things in the cloud, again, we're just using a monitor, you know, keyboard, um, and a mouse, right? Maybe a thumb, something to plug in a thumb drive. But um, I could definitely yeah, see how other OSs have a, a a possible shot now to to get in there. Absolutely, and and I think Windows uh, knows that. Yeah, sure. That's why we're seeing a lot of these uh, things, and it might be very slow to actually move on it because we're not at the forefront of knowing exactly how the OS battle is going. But um, yeah, it, it's it's absolutely one of the things that now, if latency drops. 5G and whatever the different types of things that we will get and better, more optimized code and faster CPUs and all that different types of stuff will in one way or another make it easier for someone else to have a piece of the cake. Because if you don't actually need to, uh, to, to reach the customer physically, you will have a much easier um, chance of selling them the product because you can do some Facebook advertising and say, you know what, do you need something lightning fast? That's easy, blah, 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 whatever. Buy ours, it's, it's half price of whatever Microsoft is charging. And people wouldn't care because uh, within whatever... Um, can, why, well, can we argue that like Google Sheets has done just that? Did they come in with a low free option? This and that. I mean, granted, they're not making money at using that, but it's still it's here. It, it it absolutely right. It it's it's how they have taken that march of of that cake. That's for sure. Awesome. Well, um, and if any, if you guys have any other uh, thoughts on this, please write the comments in here. We'll we'll read them back. Maybe we'll do another follow up in this one. It's it's a great topic. Um, and, and it's unfolding, right? So we're going to see where it goes. Yeah. But um, this was a good discussion. Yeah, that's great. Hey, Jackie. Bye. Bye. Bye.